they don't really think I'm attaching my hinge to the gate and post using these. I've got 15 minutes in a drill press, quarter inch lags. I'm gonna show you guys how I build a no sag gate, hopefully, out of one of these crappy fence panels. Let's get started. pickets off without cracking them. Usually they want to crack top and bottom. That's how you do it. This was all crooked, so I fixed it. It's a lot better now. This comes to the edge that I wanted it to come to. I gotta cut spacers to put in here so it'll be the proper height. This is one of the boards that I took off using just the hammer and not the two by four. And you see how it splits them just too easily. You'd have to be more gentle than I can be. So I'm going to use this as a scrap to cut the spacers. You go right there. You see here, this is the hinge side of the gate. So the post will be right here. And I wanted, uh, had to have a full board where the um, hinge is, you know, because obviously you can't do that. So that's what these spacers do. They fill in the gap here on all three uh, rails. They just line up flush with that. And that guy goes over top of it. And then now you got a full board to put your hinge on. And that'll pretty much be it, except it won't be super crooked like that, hopefully. So here's a problem you're always going to have when you're working on something somebody else built. It ain't straight. Stuff is crooked. So I've been cutting my lap joints here, which we'll talk about later. Um, and this middle one here wasn't lining up. I had just measured, you know, three and a half inches from each end of the rail and cut it. But this one was like all up in here. Well, came to realize this rail is bent up. So that's why it wasn't working out. So I had to cut a little extra out to make it work. So I came to this side and I put the level from here, the top rail to the bottom rail. And when I did that, the middle rail is short. So I made sure everything was level and square, which it is, and I put the uh, 
level on my top mark and then down to my bottom mark and I was able to re and make sure that it looked that the bubble was level then I remarked the middle one and I actually had to adjust the bottom one a hair um, and remark that one so that gave me good marks that I can now cut my lap joints out of and everything should be you know level and square as it's gonna get so that's something you got to keep in mind when you're doing these prefab uh, fence panels let's keep going let's talk about those lap joints real quick in case you don't know what it is so you cut half the depth out of each piece of wood you see I did there and they sit in each other glue them and screw them you know, have a nice tight fit I'll show you why they're so important let's show you why that lap joint is so important and I'm gonna show you what's just as critical is the bracing also this is the first gate that I ever built a uh, wooden gate and it's a few years old and it is sagging you see right there the amount of sag it's got now when I decided to put another gate on the other side of the house I said let me go do some research and that's when I found out the proper way to build the frame with the lap joints and I also found out about the bracing so there's two types I'll tell you about that in just a minute but you can clearly see here what happened the whole weight of that gate is just sagging and this had nothing supporting it so if I had the lap joint there and in all four corners it would be much much stronger and then if you combine that with a compression brace which is I'm gonna see if I can do a little mock-up here for you a crude mock-up goes from the top of the non-hinge to the bottom of the hinge stop and it would be a two by four not this and that's a compression brace. And what it does, it keeps the top rail from sagging. Think of a person with their arm in a cast. I'm sure you've seen somebody and they, they got their arm like this. And what do they have? A 45 degree rod, a rod on a 45 degree angle going from the outside to the bottom of the hinge. So their arm stays like that. Well, if this is your arm, this is your shoulder, same thing. You go from here to here, and it keeps this from being able to go like that. So that's the other thing I'm gonna do is put that proper compression brace in there. Now to fix this gate, I could redo it which I probably will or I could go buy a tension wire which goes the opposite it comes to this corner all the way down to the outside bottom and then you do a turnbuckle to tighten it and what it does it takes the bottom rail and it lifts it up so if you're crooked you're dragging the bottom up to keep the gate proper but I think I'll probably just redo the gate when I decide to put it on my list. Alright, so that's what the two big things that my research taught me, reading articles and watching videos, is the lap joints to make a strong, tight frame, and then the uh, compression bracing done the proper way. And I'm also going to tie it into this. I'm going to lap join it. Where's my hand at? Can't see, oh there it is. I'm gonna lap join it into my center rail so it's gonna be super, super strong. All right, so that's where we're at. Lessons learned. I just dry fit my uh, upright rails and I checked for square from corner to corner and corner to corner. It's perfect. 
So I'm gonna take the rails off and glue them and screw them. Let's do it. I was doing one on the corner over on the other side and I split the wood, so that's why I'm doing the extra pre-drill now to avoid that from happening again. <coughs> Works like a charm. All right, they're all screwed and glued. I'm putting two screws here because this is where the hinge is gonna be, and it's gonna have the quarter inch lags coming from the other direction. And on the other side, where I don't have the quarter inch lags, it's just gonna be two and two. So four for each uh, corner on that opposite side. I've got the compression brace dry fitted in there. I just gotta glue it and screw it. It came out pretty dang good. I got to brag on myself for a minute. I really do apologize, but like I said, I'm not a carpenter and I haven't done a lap joint since I could remember if I ever done one. And I think I did a pretty good job. I mean, look at this. I mean, those angles are almost perfect. And this, without, I thought for sure I was going to have to recut the length of this, and bam! I mean, you ain't getting more perfect than that. I do apologize for bragging, but anyway, it's in there. Those joints are tighter than a gnat's ass. And one more thing about this compression brace. Some people tell you, you know, put it in the corner so you get one on each side. And some people say it don't matter, you just do it like up top there. I'm gonna tell you, what to do this brace has to be on a 45 degree angle or greater to work properly so on my gate because of the length you see here it's a little more than 45 degrees so for me to get that i had to put the bottom like that and i had to put the top supporting the top rail which is what you want anyway you're not trying to support the up and down rail, you're trying to support your top rail. That's the whole point of it. So that's what you gotta focus on is for the length of your gate, make sure you're at least 45 degrees on your brace. And then if you do like I do and you uh, lap join it in there, which I don't know if you can really tell from where I'm at, but that's lap jointed in. Let's see. You can't see it anyway. And that's not me cutting it wrong. That's uh, the wood missing there. So that's pretty much it. 45 degrees or angle or larger angle. And it will work the way it's supposed to work. All right. I think I'm done for the night. In the last couple of clips you've been watching me uh, 
cut up the second gate. So here I am gluing on the little spacers. I already did my lap joints, as you can see, and I did it on the other side too, the non-hinge side. This is the hinge side. Um, this piece of wood is a little warped. So on the other one, I just did my two screws in all three of them and I'm gonna put the hinges on later. But here I'm gonna have to put the hinges on, on the top and then go here and put the hinges on probably using um, some vices or clamps rather um, to hold it in place properly and do the same on down the line so it'll be complete with the hinges whereas that one way over there just has the two screws holding it together it's all it needed so wish me luck The second gate is finished. I got them both sitting here. They both have their hinges put on them. And I did get this brace put in. Came out pretty good, but I can't brag on this one. There's a little, little bit of a gap there, but that's okay. What are you gonna do? Bottom came out pretty tight. The board uh, was a little bit crooked, so that didn't help things. But that's pretty much it. There's your hinges. Little spacers and glue and lap joints. Oh my. I'll cover this all dust. All right, I guess I gotta go in a couple days, tear down the old fence and uh, put new posts and everything and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, there's the last screw on the first gate. Maybe I can back up without killing myself. Hell yeah. You like my fancy spacers I made? Because you have the extra board where I'm at. This is the outside board. And this one's the inside board. So, had to put a spacer, the old beveled spacer, not focusing. All right, let's keep going. Looks pretty good to me. I just gotta put a little bit better of a hasp. This is a temporary one. And then put some uh, rebar or something going down into the ground. That'll be that.